Problems happening, especially in this country, is the act of labeling someone uh, as Wahhabi and the other parties reclaiming themselves as uh, Ahli Sunnah wal Jamaah. So this is the situation. Is uh, I used to follow one of the uh, well-known ustaz in this country and always quoted his words. But I encountered some Facebook pages uh, attacking him being one of the Wahhabi and proof with some screenshots of his wordings. But both parties are holding Islam as their religion. So what happened is it creates doubt in my mind towards the Ustaz. So uh, can I seek explanation for this issue? Thank you. I didn't want this catch question, but anyway, it's the last one. So let's go for it. Uh, as much as I wouldn't like to address the matter, I have to. Okay? Let me explain something. It's not an issue of Wahhabi, non-Wahhabi, what, what. People have been here for years on end. It's an issue of intolerance. It's an issue of extremism on all parties. I believe every Ustaz makes mistakes, without exception. Take the good from all of them and leave the bad. When someone preaches hatred against another, discount it. And if you have the opportunity, go to them and tell them, please, don't talk about other people. I want to ask you a question and I'm going to stand for this. You know who I am, right? I'm a brother of yours in faith. Have you ever heard me talk bad about another person? No. Mashallah. <laughs> Mashallah. The innocent have borne witness. Do you agree? Why? I have so much of goodness to share with the world that I don't have time to worry about others. Come on, come on. Those who talk about others don't have something to present themselves. I am busy doing my work. So many people send me messages. Oh, someone called you a Wahhabi. Someone called you a Sufi. Someone said you're a Salafi. Someone said you're a Deobandi. Someone said you're a Baralvi. Some of these names, I don't even know what they mean, to be honest with you. I was waiting for the day they said someone called you a chocolate man because that's more, that's true, you know. But all these names for me, I say, hey, look, I know what I am. I'm a Muslim and I'm trying to spread a good message amongst all groups. Let me carry on doing my work. The minute I turn to fight them, I become a fighter. I cause a bigger problem. And now who's going to do this good work? Because my energy, like I said earlier, all the energies are now being utilized, waste of resources, to do something where it's going to be less beneficial, in fact, destructive. So please do yourself a favor. When you hear labeling, you need to be more intelligent than the label. You need to rise above it and tell yourself, whatever good is coming from this person, I will take it. Whatever bad is coming, I will discount it. The reason is, even if you belong to one group, it does not mean the ustazes of your group, everything they say is right. They will also say wrong things. You will have to pick it up. And it doesn't mean that there is a Christian across the road so they cannot teach you something good. I have had people who taught me mathematics and geography and biology and sociology and English language who were Jews and Christians and Hindus and people who belong to other faiths. I took from them whatever I had to and I left whatever I didn't. You follow what I'm saying? So when you go to the university, you will have a lecturer who might be gay, for example. You know, I'm not talking about this nation in particular, but maybe in Europe, okay? You take from them whatever you feel you need to take from them and leave the rest. I'm there to study petroleum engineering, for example, or whatever else. I took whatever I had to and that's it. And I respect them for having given me what they did. That's humanity. The problem with us is, the problem is all over. We all are guilty of labeling others. This one is this. Let's, let's understand. It's qualities that make us or break us. You have a bad quality. Look, I'm sitting with people. I don't need to know what inclination he is or I am. I know I get along on common factors that are 9,999 compared to the one item that I might, I might find that I'm different with him in. Do you know? So this is why I say, let's not allow our nation to crumble based on this labeling that's going on. Take the good from everyone and leave that which is not good, no matter where it's from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. May Allah bless your nation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you strength and growth. And may whatever issues you may be having be resolved in the best possible way that results in the true growth of your beautiful nation. Jazakumullah khair. There are sects among the Muslimin. We get along. That's how it should be. We should be getting along. We should greet each other. This business of labeling people kafir is one of the roots of the problems we have. 
and that does not exist only with one sect trust me it exists with many many sects when you have a difference you know this one's a kafir why for what why use heavy terms obviously this might be understood by the muslims more than others but we know it's a problem because the minute you label someone with these labels that are so heavy do you know what will happen it creates a sense of uh, going back to some rulings in the hearts of some of the Muslims and you know the ruling of apostasy for example some of them have made mention of some harsh rulings the problem is the people start taking the law in their own hands that's where the problem is Yes, ma'am. Um, you hear on the news, Sunni, Shiite, I know there's divisions. Is it cultural or are there actually some differences? Okay, wonderful. So the question is about Sunni and Shia. What's going on here, right? Sunni and Shia. And I was just speaking at my wife and I was smiling at my wife right there. <laughs> the reason is we have done so many open houses and open house is not complete unless that question is asked. <laughs> so thank you for asking that. Now it's really important, when Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, when he was alive, he was a prophet, the last prophet, and he was also the head of the state, means he was the president of the country, for example. So after he passed away in the year 632, Muslims have to appoint a new head of the state, not a new prophet by the way, a new head of the state. So there were two groups of people, a larger group of people, they wanted to appoint Abu Bakr, the name and he was a companion of Muhammad peace be upon him, an eligible person. Some other group of people, they want to appoint Ali. And Ali was from the family. He was the son-in-law and the cousin of the Prophet. And he was equally eligible by the way. It so happened that Abu Bakr was chosen at the very first caliph or the head of the state. So this bigger group, they started to be named as the Sunni. That means they are following the path of the Prophet. And the smaller group, later on, they were given the name of a Shia, means the party, or the party of Ali. But that name, the Sunni or the Shia, is not present in the Quran for the followers of Islam. The only name that God has given to the follower of Islam in chapter 2, 22, verse number 78, is the name Muslim. So that division, so the division is a political division by the way, it's not a theological division. If somebody asks me the question, Sabil, who are you? Are you a Sunni or a Shia? I would say that I am a? Yes. But really important, some people may have the notion that the Sunni or the Shia, if I have to label that, that we are analogous to the Catholics, the Protestants, the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses, that's not true. Unlike our Christian brothers and sisters, like the Catholics and the Protestants, they believe in the triune concept of God. Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't, by the way. But all the Muslims around the world, we believe in the absolute oneness of God. So all the Muslims, we are unanimous in believing in one God. We don't have division when it comes to concept of God. Our Christian brothers and sisters, when it different versions of the Bible, like the Catholics may have 73 books in the Bible. The Protestants will have 66 books in the Bible. The Greek Orthodox will have 78 books in the Bible. But Muslims all over the world, we have only one Quran in Arabic, exactly the same, 114 chapters in there. Again, we are unanimous. When Muslims pray, we pray exactly the same way. You go to any mosque. I have never been to China, by the way. If I go to China, if I go to a mosque in China, I will be at ease. Knowing that they would be praying exactly the same way. But our Christian brothers and sisters, your masses, your services may be different. And we respect that, by the way. So what I'm trying to say is, all the Muslims around the world, we are united in our fundamentals. And we don't, and we should not label ourselves as a Sunni or a Shia. Only one label that God has given to us. And that label is the label of a Muslim. But then your question may be, how come some people are fighting between Sunni and Shia and whatnot, right? And the quick answer to that is, that is a human problem. Humans fight. 
our Christian brothers and sisters, you know, from the Catholic and the Protestant sect, they have been fighting in Ireland and uh, there was a hundred year war in France and Germany, all of that. We blame them, but not Christianity for it. In the same way, if you see some Muslim doing this and that, we have to blame them and their shortcoming, their misunderstanding, their brainwashing, and not the wonderful faith of Islam. Good question. Thank you. you have confusion like uh, when you meet you ask first the question is uh, whether you are a Wahhabi or a Sunna, a Sunni whatever this kind of questions there is a confusion between you itself what do you want us to follow what is that uh, we can exactly come follow and uh, the sister asked a question that the non-muslim sister asked there is a confusion among the Muslim when you meet you ask you are a Wahhabi or are you Hanafi or a Shafi or a Maliki so there is a confusion amongst the Muslims so what's the reply? I do agree with the uh, non-Muslim sister that unfortunately many Muslims call different names. But when I tell the Hindus to go back to the Vedas, I tell the Muslims to go back to the Quran. <laughs> Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number three, verse number 103, Allah says, Wa tasimu bi hablillahi jami wa tafarraku. Hold the robe of Allah strongly and be not divided. We have to hold the robe of Allah. The robe of Allah is the glorious Quran and the authentic Hadith. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, that anyone who makes division in the religion of Islam, O oh Prophet, you have nothing to do with him. Making sex, making division in Islam is prohibited. It is haram. But when we ask the Muslims, what are you? Some say I'm a Hanafi, some say I'm a Shafi, some say I'm a Hanbali, some say I'm a Salafi. What was the Prophet? Was the Prophet Hanafi? Was the Shafi? Was the Hanbali? Was the Malaki? What was he? You are the Muslim. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 52, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, peace be upon you, you are the Muslim. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 67, that Abraham, peace be upon him, you are the Muslim. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fusila, chapter number 41, verse number 33, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَالَ مِمَّنْ دَعِي لَلَّهِ وَعَمِلُ صَالِحَوْنَ قَالَ إِنَّنِ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness, and says that I'm a Muslim? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad was a Muslim. Allah has told us to call ourselves Muslim. They cannot be a better label than Muslim. See, all these four great imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Malik, may Allah be pleased with them all. They were great scholars. I love them. I respect them all. They were great scholars. But all these great scholars said, all these four imams said, that if you find any of my fatwa, which goes against Allah and his Rasul, then you throw my fatwa on the wall. So here if you analyze that all these imams that came, they came not to make a new sex, they came for the people to go back to the original scripture, the Quran, the Sahih Hadith. So what we have to realize, that I know there are people who say that isn't there a Hadith in which the Prophet said there will be 73 sects. It's a Hadith of Tirmidhi, it's a Sahih Hadith, Hadith number 171. The Prophet said there will be 73 sects. Prophet didn't say you should make. Prophet knew that even though Allah says don't make a bound to make. So the best is to go back to Allah and His Rasul. And the best label you can have is call yourself a Muslim. Any scholar, let it be anyone in the world, let him be the biggest scholar of the world. You ask him for proof. Produce your proof if you're truthful. If you're honest, produce your proof. So any scholar, if there's a difference of opinion, you ask him for proof. Get the proof, check it up. Therefore, in my talk, I always give references. What I say, what Zakir says is rubbish in Islam. It is zero, nil. Therefore, I say, Zakir doesn't say, Allah says, Qul huwa Allah huwa, say is Allah one and only. If Zakir says it is rubbish, zero, nil in Islam. If Allah says it carries weight. If the Prophet says it carries weight. So therefore, sisters, Muslims should not be divided. We should call ourselves Muslims and follow the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Anyone who divides the religion, they are going against the Quran. منفیت ایک ہے اس قوم کی نقصان بھی ایک ایک ہی سب کا نبی دین بھی ایمان بھی ایک حرم پاک بھی اللہ بھی قرآن بھی ایک کچھ بڑی بات تھی ہوتی جو مسلمان بھی ایک فرقہ بندی ہے کہیں اور کہیں جاتے ہیں کیا زمانے میں پنپنے کی یہی باتیں ہیں 
کون ہے تارک آئین رسول مختار مسلحت وقت کی ہے کس کے عمل کا معیار کس کی آنکھوں میں سمایا ہے شعار اغیار ہو گئی کس کی نگاہ طرز سلف سے بیزار قلب میں سوز نہیں روح میں احساس نہیں کچھ بھی پیغام محمد کا تمہیں پاس نہیں تم تو سید بھی ہو مرزا بھی ہو افغان بھی ہو تم سبھی کچھ ہو بتاؤ تو مسلمان بھی ہو